I'm recording this as a second shot, and I hope that you got to catch the live stream yesterday with my friend Johnny Vito Rizzuto concerning a variety of topics. But we're going to talk today about the gray zone and how they portray the way protests happen abroad as opposed to over here. And the fact is that what I'm bringing here to you today is not in order to convince you to support my view on Latin America, which is that I support capitalism. I support ending state monopolies. I support extending civil and economic liberties. And I don't think that the people at Gray Zone or across the Latin American left or for that matter, the worldwide left. They don't really care about the liberties of individuals. They've never supported anything like the, the Second Amendment here in, the Amer in America, giving it to people overseas. Why would they care if people in Cuba or in, in Brazil had the right to keep and bear arms if they, so, if they so strongly feel the armed struggle worldwide against tyranny, as they call it, is so important? They never talk about a constitutional amendment to keep and bear arms. And they probably would never try to get a First Amendment passed in any of those countries because they don't really believe in freedom of speech. So we're going to go through a video from Dan Cohn that a friend of mine shared. Uh, it was on Twitter. By the way, I am banned on Twitter. So supposedly the corporate media doesn't want to hear from libertarians who use the R word when talking about other so-called libertarians. But this communist gets to spew his garbage on Twitter. Imagine if Occupy protesters were waving Chinese flags and calling for President Xi to liberate them from the United States. Wouldn't that be suspicious? Wouldn't it at least raise some eyebrows and probably discredit them? Well, that scenario is exactly what's happening in Hong Kong. Except these masked protesters are calling on President Trump to liberate them from China. And corporate media talking heads, the very same personalities who fixated on phantoms of Russian meddling in US elections, well, they're hailing these masked protesters as pro democracy. Pro democracy protesters spilled into the streets. Pro democracy protesters braving the rain in Hong Kong. Simply seeking liberty and freedom. This is very much a protest led by the people. This is a protest that is spontaneous. It's almost like this pro democracy talking point used by every single corporate media outlet is part of a coordinated effort. Pro democracy. Pro democracy. Pro democracy. Pro democracy. But what corporate media won't tell you is that the US government is deeply involved in the unrest gripping Hong Kong. Now, obviously, there's no way the United States can mobilize thousands upon thousands of protesters, but what it can do, and indeed does, is groom protest leaders ahead of time. So when an opportunity arises, the US is in position to redirect popular discontent to suit its own interests instead of the masses of protesters. Cynical stuff, huh? This is Josh. So to clarify what he's saying, Protests over there are bad. Protests in any of these countries are bad. But when we talk about violent protests here, like what happened on January 21st, 2017, during the inauguration of our new president, Trump, he never had anything to say about that. But this is what happened. Six police officers were wounded. Here's Errol Barnett. Vandalism aimed at downtown businesses prompted riot police to descend on these unruly protesters. One demonstrator threw a flashbang grenade back at police. It exploded in an officer's face, leaving him with minor injuries. This is K Street. It's where many lobbyists have their headquarters in Washington. But today, it appears like a conflict zone. You're seeing an example of the thousands of police officers who've been out in force. These are metro officers in riot gear. They're trying to protect people and prevent any more businesses from being damaged. Vivian has lived in Washington since the 1980s. I'm just amazed at how many protests there are against the new administration, and I think rightfully so. This Trump supporter could barely get a word in with protesters surrounding him. Hannah Zhang thinks the country is at a crossroads. I think Trump's election is kind of really showing the two opposite sides of where America is standing right now. So, so you even see people there that are not, I mean, I, I'm not anti-immigration as much as most people on the right, but you see an, an Indian American woman and a Chinese American woman protesting against Trump 
with a picture of a woman in a hijab uh, in the, you know, stylized as the American flag. This is, in the eyes of the left, legitimate protest. It's really and, showing that you all... And to be honest with you, under the First Amendment, yeah, it's a legitimate protest. And in America, those people are guaranteed that. Opposite sides of where America is standing right now. More than 60 groups with varying agendas had permits to demonstrate. Most agreed on one... So, so look here. You see, actually... Genders had permits left. to demonstrate. Most agreed on... You see, you see, we're the blood of this land. Che Guevara on a, on a big sign, uh, you know, showing all the different flags of the Americas. Is that not a sign that these protesters are not really loyal to the United States if they're putting Che Guevara's face? Che Guevara, who was an enemy of the United States his entire life. On one common point of contention, the president himself. What Chanel Jacobs says protesters have a right to free speech. What do you make of the thousands of other people who protested today for many different reasons? Um, I say more power to them. I'm proud of them for actually stepping up and saying that they don't see that eye to eye with, us, uh, with President Trump. Michael Coulomb drove from... So here's a guy wearing the kafia, which is the Palestinian side of resistance. You don't think that that's a little bit suspicious? Have it? Now, I don't. Okay, I'm putting the, the forward there because Dan Cohen is saying that these protesters in Hong Kong who are waving American flags, that's a sign of American subversion. But is this a sign of Palestinian subversion because he's wearing the kafia? I don't think so. Let me put that very, very clearly. Uh, and I'm not going to just pick on the Palestinians here because that would be disingenuous. And I don't think he's doing this in order to bring the United States under Palestinian control. But if we apply the same standards that Dan Cohn is applying, then a lot of his own cohorts would be themselves disqualified from being called legitimate protesters. In Connecticut to join the protest. And it's only his first day. Why not give him space and time to perhaps deliver on the things you want? I don't think that you can ever wait to demand your rights. I don't think you could ever wait till the, to demand your rights. Well, then you don't believe that the electoral process, which is what brought Trump into power, is really legitimate. You believe in revolution, and even if it's nonviolent revolution, you're trying to subvert the democratic process, which is really what the left does. The, uh, you know, I'm talking about the left people who are uh, basically democratic socialist and further to the left. Those are the people I'm talking about. They believe in Marxism. They believe in many cases in Marxism-Leninism, which does believe in revolution, violent revolution if necessary. Now tomorrow we'll likely see even bigger anti-Trump protests, Scott, when at least 200,000 people are expected to flood the National Mall for the Women's March on Washington. Errol Barnett in Washington for us tonight. Errol, thank you. So there were several, there was, for example, the famous... Uh, case, uh, I mean, you see here, here's some photos. I don't know why it wasn't in the video, but uh, you see there's smoke grenades. I don't know if this was launched by the police. It says the police launched them. You have a burning limo over here. That's the one I remember. Um, you have broken windows. Those, so those weren't broken by the police. So uh, yeah, Dan Cohn is ignoring the fact that many times these people do resort to violence and vandalism. And in, in their book, it's fine because the vandalism attacks you saw over there, it attacks Bank of America. They don't believe Bank of America has the right to safety or that their, uh, you know, their facilities have the right to not be attacked. Here you see burning garbage. Uh, it says activists also set trash cans and vending machines on fire. So whenever CBS News reports on things like this, the left will call them corporate media. And they are corporate media. But whenever CBS News is attacked by people like the Trump administration, the left claims that it's Trump attacking the media. You have to pick one way. So if uh, either they're completely discredited corporate media, in which case you, you never believe anything they say, or they're a legitimate press outfit. Um, here's a woman with, you know, being hit by pepper spray, who was a protester. Uh, here's a, here's someone calling him a Putin puppet and showing him having a gay kiss um, pepper sprayed protester. So most of these photos are of people being arrested. Uh, you know, people blocking walkways. See that? 
Uh, we outnumber him, resist. Isn't that a subliminal message for violence? Uh, umbrella protesters, right? The umbrella protest was, if you remember, remember, that's the symbol of the Hong Kong protests. Uh, Trump treason with with the Soviet flag here, right? Well, I guess they were making fun of him for being a Putin puppet. I don't know why they have stuff in, in Filipino here. <laughs> I guess there's a, a number of Filipinos that don't like him. So, yeah, they, they had people ban burning his effigy, right? This is the new president of the United States. So is that is that subversion or isn't that subversion? Of course it's not. A mock funeral for the Statue of Liberty. That I mean, that's creative. I don't have any problem with that. Showing him as Hitler. Uh, Klan. Trump is part of the Klan. This was this was the very first day he took office. And that, that's something that Dan, burning the American flag here. So you don't think... That you don't think that that's actually an analogy to what you're talking about in Hong Kong, Dan Cohen? Well, let's listen to some of the other stuff he says. As the fresh face, the poster boy of Hong Kong's democracy movement, Netflix even made a documentary showcasing him as a hero. But what they don't tell you is that Wong works hand in hand with the US government. He's met with top neoconservative senators like Marco Rubio and Democratic Party elites like Nancy Pelosi. Wong testified on Capitol Hill thanking Congress, not for the money it gave him, but for standing on the side of freedom. I hope the historians will celebrate the United States Congress for having stood on the side of Hong Kongers, the side of human rights and democracy. God bless Hong Kong. Thank you. Wang was even caught on camera meeting with a political counselor from the US Embassy in Hong Kong. He received money from the National Endowment for Democracy, or NED. What was created during the Reagan administration, in the words of co-founder Alan Weinstein, a lot of what we do today was done covertly 25 years ago by the CIA. And that's just scratching the surface of Wong and his fellow schemers' ties to the U.S. government. If somebody is a tool of the U.S. government or, uh, you know, a foreign government, then I guess he has a real problem with that. But this is from the Washington Free Beacon. Now, they are biased. They're a pro-Israel publication. I'm not going to, um, you know, make any denial about that. But they did show this uh, Twitter screenshot of Max Blumenthal, who is Dan Cohn's boss at the Gray Zone, meeting with Nicolas Maduro on July 31st. Uh, I believe, well, the, the article was published on, on July 31st. It said Venezuelan dictator Nicolas Maduro on Tuesday gave... Max Blumenthal, an anti-Israel activist and son of longtime Hillary Clinton advisor, they should have said Sidney Blumenthal, and other activists, a replica of Bolivar's sword. Blumenthal, who leads the website The Gray Zone, which he founded, was joined by his colleagues Ben Norton and Anya Parampil. Additionally, there were Code Pink activist Patricia Wieland and multiple representatives from groups such as Popular Resistance and Act Now to Stop War and End Racism. The activists were invited down to Venezuela to meet with Maduro after they occupied the, the Venezuelan embassy in Washington, D.C. back in May. And then they go into some, some crap that has nothing to do with it about his stuff with Hamas and, and Israel, which is irrelevant to the point here. But it does show that he does support foreign regimes all over the world. They just happen to be ones that are anti-United States or anti-Israel or both. And it says, Reuters reporter Luke Cohn on Tuesday tweeted out two pictures of the activists meeting with Maduro at Miraflores. So you see them standing at attention here. This is, uh, you can see Blumenthal here behind one of, uh, I think this is the Venezuelan ambassador to the UN. I don't remember his name. This is Ben Norton, who is another gray zone toady. And this is a person from, and toady is, is by the word, wait, I know that uh, Barry Weiss doesn't know the, the meaning of the word toady. A toady is just a stooge, a person who is just a puppet of someone else. These people are puppets of the Venezuelan government. Now, they might be ideologically committed, which is the whole problem, that if you're in journalism and you're ideologically committed, you can't report honestly, and therefore you're not really being a honest uh, broker there, th and and this is um, the logo for VTV, which is Venezuela te Television, which is the state, the state television station of Venezuela, right? And you can actually see here that they are all touching the sword that Maduro is giving them, you know, smiling. So so 
Max Blumenthal, who claims, oh, I'm, I'm giving interviews with Maduro. I'm presenting the other side of the argument. You're presenting the other side of the argument because you are the person who is on the other side. You're not a real objective journalist at all. You're an ideological actor. That's really what you're doing, Blumenthal. And, and by extension, it's the same thing with Dan Cohn, who works for Max Blumenthal. So I wouldn't be – now, look, I, I've looked for some sources for where Gray Zone gets its funding. I haven't seen much yet, but um, – and uh, to be honest with you, I think that legally they're not required to declare who, uh, who their donors are. Uh, I believe that they are really a donation-based uh, journalistic source, so they, they get a lot of their stuff from Patreon, which is absolutely fine. So here, here's the actual video from the event. Un saludo lleno de amor al pueblo de los Estados Unidos. He says, I salute and I love the people of the United States. Acércate, camarógrafo. Un abrazo. Ahí les mando la espada victoriosa del libertador Simón Bolívar en la batalla de Carabobo. So he says, I'm giving to them the sword of victory of Simón Bolívar from the battle of Carabobo. Como una espada de luz para el pueblo de Estados Unidos as a sort of light for the people of the United States. And he says, I'm thanking them for their solidarity with the, the people of Venezuela from the people of the United States. So he, he's effectively doing the same thing as Mike Pompeo. He's trying to say, well, the people of the the people of the United States support us, but the government is evil. Just like Mike Pompeo is saying the people of Hong Kong support us, even though the government of Hong Kong is against us. So this is disingenuous garbage from people like Dan Cohn. They're not against regime change. They're not against subversion. They're, they're only against it when it's against their side. So that's about it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also subscribe to me on BitChute and on Minds.com as well as on Subscribestar if you want to donate. All of those, you can find my tag at Chef Leopard, and you can find me on Gab at Starscream85, and I'll talk to you later.